pictures on this Mike Kenny's letter and know that he was a member of PSSA in the late 1980s before moving to Los Angeles. You may also know him from the scores of YouTube instructions on calligraphy and chimney art um, and from his uh, website, Blue Heron Art, which, is, which has um, lots, lots of supplies for swimming. Henry presented our program last year in April, and um, that, pro that program and also today will be recorded and available uh, for you online. Uh, and today, he's going to interpret the, the swimming classic four legged gentlemen, which represent the four seasons of the year. And uh, the plum blossoms for winter, orchids for spring, bamboo summer, and the Japanese uh, autumn. So we are so happy to have Henry here today. Recording in progress. Please, please turn, please turn on your um, audio, unmute, turn on your audio for just a minute and give Henry a big round, warm round of applause. So, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Thank everybody. Yeah, Happy New Year. I'm where? Hello. Uh, okay. Um, I'm. Can you see me? Uh, he's muted. Oh. Oh, I said, I'm sorry. I was uh, responding to your greeting, uh, saying uh, Happy New Year, everybody. You hear me now? Great. Yes, I'm, I'm trying to um, ping, ping my to video. Move the yeah, yeah uh, I'm uh, I'm wearing a we green one. Yeah. We got this. Okay. Now I'm going to focus on my table just to, to see. Uh, okay. <laughs> I was uh, uh, invited by Darcy. Uh, uh, and we talked about uh, the subject matters. Um, uh, she mentioned that you this year you will start to uh, learn the art of flower arrangement. Um, so I I told her that I had no background in uh, ikebana, right, in Japanese um, pronunciation. So Ikebana is uh, foreign to me, but uh, I'm very interested in that. So I uh, went to a bookstore and bought this book. Um, I started reading and I was really fascinated by all the uh, history and the principles of uh, uh, the art of flower arrangement. So today I will try to uh, give some uh, feedback uh, on, on the two arts. Uh, the sumie or the Chinese brush painting and uh, the art of uh, flower arrangement. Would that be a uh, good idea? Okay. To, uh, so my, my first impression is uh, um, that uh, the flower arrangement uh, is a form of uh, art much different from the uh, regular, if you see my my uh, uh, background uh, here, I got a vase with uh, you know my regular uh, flower. Um, what do you call this? Uh, 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 just you know, we just put it in, throw in, right, <laughs> in the vase. That's all I do. But maybe a little bit, uh, but we 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 turn not to change anything. Um, just like uh, when we. Um, when we paint, we just copy everything from nature or a picture. So we don't really do anything to it, uh, not much. But in flower arrangement, you actually resemble things. Like those leaves um, of iris are put together, or you know, uh, like a, the uh, uh, branch of a plum blossom. Uh, you have to reorganize them. You kind of... Uh, um, reassemble the, the parts from uh, scratch. So you got to have a general guideline, just like when we paint, we have a principle of uh, composition. 
or a formula as uh, il illustrated in the famous teaching book uh, Master Seeds Garden Manual of Painting, right? So maybe you need to mute yourself, the background noise. Sorry. Um, so we, um, we must learn that, that, for example, here uh, it's a typical uh, say cut uh, style I just learned. Uh, Shenhua is a fresh uh, flower style. And you have like three points. They have names for Xing, uh, Soi, and uh, Tai, right? Something like that. So in, in painting, we have similar things like uh, how to organize um, the three strokes to begin with. The three is a good number. Like here, you see how they assemble the leaves um, accordingly uh, to to. Actually, those those principles are derived from nature. So, like the, the tip of the the leaves must face each other, and something like that. So, I learned a lot from doing that. So, I'm going to show you the painting I did. I have a painting right bit, uh, on the screen. Let me take it here. So, this was my first uh, uh, painting. I did do. I didn't find um, any. Symbidium um, or the uh, Asian wild orchid kind of uh, flower used in the um, Ikebana uh, flower arrangement because they're maybe too treasurable to to use as a um, you know you, you have to kill the, the because the Japanese uh, like a, uh, maybe Chinese also believe the the you know, when when you are born, you're bound to die. The, so the flower is not going to last forever anyway. Um, so the moment you finish the arrangement is fulfilled, uh, the life of uh, you know, cultivate, you know, uh, accumulate the, the life. It, it's a, it's a, a celebration time, you know. So uh, they don't mind to arrange the flower, to, to cut it, right? But in painting, we are not going to kill the flowers, fortunately. Uh, I don't feel, uh, you know, we, we call actually painting, uh, cutting flowers. Uh, like this kind of painting, we call it uh, cutting branch. It's because we don't do the, 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 um, the ground. We usually omit that, or the background. It's like a cut, arranged cutting, you know, flowers. Something like that. So this is this is my response. So you can see the the three uh, points that form a uh, uh, irregular triangle or um, uneven sided triangle. If you if you look at this and uh, uh, the principles of uh, you know three flowers also form a triangle um, that corresponding to the the Xing, the the Tai or the uh, Soi, right? So uh, this kind of uh, a host guest, we call it a child parents relationship, is very important. So we, we tend to always put the things equally, but in painting, it must be hierarchical, right? Um, that's the first thing I, I, I think we need to pay attention. That's the, the overall uh, idea before you start to arrange or paint, you, you should have a, a, a plan that usually derive from the traditional uh, formula, and then you can get into uh, more freestyle. I don't know which school are you going to learn, but uh, in modern uh, flower arrangement, it's more free, uh, freer, right? So you, you, you can have crossing leaves, but in the past, they don't uh, tend to, you can only see from the front, but uh, in modern times, you can see around like a sculpture, I, I just learned. So um, anyway, to um, to do some demo, I think you you're going to to uh, I I do like this style of flower because uh, uh, for orchid like you see in my uh, little picture here we have a live flower I, I want to show you but uh, uh, it's kind of a small it's not completely open yet but I want to show maybe many of you may not have seen this. Uh, before maybe uh, let me put it under my front view. 
it's kind of hard to turn it to this way, but you can see the flower is here because the, the weather is so uh, cold these days. So the spring is, um, we, although we, in Southern California, we have uh, uh, sometimes very hot winter. So the flower think it's spring, but not yet. So it start to bloom without the, um, the stem. Usually, it, it, like you see here, it should be a little, a couple inch above the ground. Like you see in the picture on my left corner, it's the same flower uh, last year. Uh, this year it's, it's uh, uh, blooming again. It's, it's, uh, the Chinese orchids or Japanese, uh, 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 this is called the gor gorengi, right? The Cinchibidium uh, gorengi. It, it has a very fragment, fragrant um, smell. We call it uh, uh, like uh, the king's or the emperor's um, fragrant, the king of fragrant, fragrant, uh, fragrance. So uh, the leaves are more important to, uh, to appreciate than the flowers. So when we really, you know, when we paint the flowers, we might simplify it into just a few calligraphic strokes. Normally, we don't depict this kind of. Uh, uh, you know details, but uh, uh, in for for artists, I mean for flower uh, lovers, for orchid lovers, they know it very detailed the name of each petal. But in painting, we 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 are not really into uh, those kind of botanic knowledge. Uh, let me show you. I found the closest. Uh, uh, this is the the plant, uh, same flower uh, from last year, and. Uh, I found this classical painting, which is uh, um, very close to this flower. Okay, so maybe I'll do a demo of this to start with, then we'll uh, paint some uh, iris, because uh, I think iris is related, uh, the technique is related, and it's more common uh, in your area. Maybe you, uh, it's a very, the mo probably the most popular uh, material used for uh, Ikebana 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 uh, art of uh, flower arrangement. Okay, so the paper I'm going to use is unsized um, mulberry paper. Mulberry paper uh, number one. I, 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 we we call it. It has less fibers. Um, so I, I'll just do a copy of the painting on the screen. Um, you, I don't know if you are supposed to paint along. No, just watching, right? Okay, okay. But anyway, I'll, you can paint along later with the recording. So I will introduce you some uh, materials. So the first thing I'm going to. Uh, Tell you is the brush. I would use any any um, calligraphy brush. So uh, the best is a stiff brush, maybe for the leaf. But I use a combination brush, which is the uh, stick stiff core. So I just use some leftover ink from previous uh, lesson uh, calligraphy lesson. So when I do the the leaves, I don't have to vary the uh, tones, okay? So basically you start from the, the bottom and then press and lift several uh, times to indicate the, the, the uh, curve and the, the, the uh, turns, okay, of uh, the, the flat blade of uh, shape of leaf. That's um, the first first stroke usually has to do with the shin, right? So then uh, you have complementary shins, but uh, we, we we can do that later. Uh, in flower arrangement terms, <laughs> I, I'm thinking uh, that the uh, maybe another leaf like this this side. It could be under here. So let me. 
Yeah, in painting, we classically we, we just make a crossing and then uh, break that to avoid same length. That's the principle of uh, uh, flower arrangement, same as uh, in painting. So some leaves are shorter, some uh, longer. So another group of three indicates the tie or, or the child group in, in Chinese brush painting. And you can you can um, omit the the bottom. I may call this tie because I think she uh, and maybe that's a uh, soy and a tie. Maybe and we can make another short group. To to suggest some uh, uh, the root the 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 uh, root, not to paint the background. Same idea as uh, cut flowers. Um, and then we'll, we'll change, you can wash the brush to get light ink, but uh, I, we can use a different brush, similar brush, but uh, in, in uh, light tone. So we've got uh, a little bit ink and uh, dilute it with uh, water. You don't have to vary the tonalities on each stroke. Um, As uh, many uh, new students may, you know, try to to, to do, especially if you put dark uh, on the tip, it make it uh, too heavy. So the top, the dark should be in the center of the flower, indicate the little uh, smiley face kind of pattern, you know. Um, so I will do three petals here. And it, this kind of flower has. Uh, uh, we call it the lotus lotus shape, lotus flower shape. You can see that right here. Or I can hold. Uh, maybe. Now you can see the picture uh, earlier from the picture earlier. So there are three other petals. Petals. But there's a foreshortened uh, on the front. Uh, so we just do a rounded one, rounded, and uh, it has two kind of uh, side petals that hold the center tongue. We call it the tongue. Um, and uh, two petals on the side, but not make it uh, too even. So once one on that, the, the flower growers usually, or the judge will, um, will, will see if the these arms are flat, kind of like shoulders, we call it like flat, uh, leveled. But uh, usually they have a little, uh, because of the gravity, you know. So notice that I, I don't paint the center solid, and then, you know, you can leave even some uh, gap, uh, suggest to the center, but not to end every stroke in the center, but it should be uh, pointing to the center, right? Then there's a little kind of a, a tongue. And uh, the stem, we can use a little bit darker ink, maybe to start with here. Uh, I'll, I'll make it longer, so you just, you don't have to copy natural. Like you know, uh, we can make the natural looks uh, more ideal. So uh, you can. Depends on the flower, uh, you can put a smiley or some kind of, a, uh, you, traditionally they put three dots, but I just put a smiley there. <laughs> okay, um, so that's, oh, there's another, uh, I already did something here, so that would be uh, counted as a butt. Usually it, uh, there's, there's a butt in the sample painting on, the, on, the, on this side. So I can do that, maybe. So we we'll just do a butt, that's overlapping because uh, the flower can be used to kind of reshape the the uh, negative space. 
here I see a parallel line. I want to break that. So I just add a flower. Okay, it should be a little lot lighter. Um, you can you can block it actually. You got a piece of tissue here. A, t a piece of tissue is very useful uh, in uh, brush painting to to control the bleeding or the smearing, and they also sometimes uh, adjust the tonality. Okay. Any questions on 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 the orchid? Well, I think this uh, is pretty straightforward at right? the, the beginning uh, lesson, but it takes lifetimes, uh, as said, uh, as said in, in Chinese painting theory, to develop because the uh, the calligraphy, uh, the quality of line needs long uh, time practice to get. Okay, so now I'm going to apply the same idea. Um, in, with the uh, iris. Iris is pretty challenging. And uh, uh, it, this was my lesson one in, in my recorded uh, DVDs. Uh, uh, I, t I, I grouped the orchid and iris together because I think the, uh, the plant, is, you know, at that time we don't even have a live orchid today. Uh, we, we, we start to grow, Victoria start to uh, grow them in our um, backyard um, about two years ago. Now we have, we have them grow uh, all year round and a, a, bloom, blo a bloom all year round. We have summer orchid, it has longer stems with uh, nine flowers. Uh, I can show you some pic other pictures. Um, and this is a wild orchid. She grows uh, on the regular soil ground, you know, on, on in our garden, uh, next to a rock. You can see very beautiful. It's a wild orchid. That's the most common kind of orchid, um, not a very expensive ones, um, in uh, in China. We we call it wild orchid. Wild orchid. It has long, long. Um, Pedals, five of them. Uh, you can still count, you know, like three auto outer uh, ones erupt, uh, you know, the, the tongue and the uh, those two side embracing pedals. This is a side view, very clear. You can see them. So usually uh, comes in, in. If I want, uh, if I want, I, if you like, I, I, we can just do another one quickly. Just start with, uh, uh, let me just do it uh, very large so you can see. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Uh, actually, three outer petals. Uh, it, it, it could. This one is the one, two, three. Or this one, done. The center to rupture uh, the we we usually uh, just use dots in the in, to indicate the uh, the center the pollen let's go down like that this one on top okay and then the stem that's how they the girl. You can have two on spring orchid. This is spring orchid um, and a seven or nine on summer orchid. Okay, and then you, you, you put uh, this kind of uh, using dark, just uh, a few dots, three dots, just like uh, writing a character uh, heart. Yeah. You can find the, this kind of formula in any teaching books. Um, that's uh, and the most importantly is uh, not to end all the strokes at the same point. Uh, a, you know, a common mistake is like this. 
don't do this okay all right you just put a star kind of you end every stroke in in the middle uh, you should do this some t some uh, crossing yeah something like that right this is what we do and then add the dots near the bottom and uh, center part can you, can you see the details let me give you a close up for you okay any questions on on, the, on penny orchids um, if not we'll continue uh, with the uh, iris okay for for painting iris i uh, usually, I usually, you know, uh, will follow a master in the field uh, who is considered the best iris painter. You know, um, by the way, this is a winter orchid called a um, panda, giant panda. It's a pretty tall one, kanan in Japanese. Um, chrysanthemum, bamboo, palm blossom. And this is another colored orchids. Uh, we have different uh, kind of orchid kind of uh, plant. It's a big family. This, this is this, uh, a, a hybrid of uh, dandelion and uh, some maybe uh, cattleya. Uh, it's called the golden peacock. Same idea, you know. Uh, oh, by the way. There are two schools in or two steps, you might say, uh, in painting flowers, uh, in Asian brush painting. Um, one is to copy the classics. That's stage one, step one. Uh, when you study, you must learn the strokes, right? And then uh, we we should learn directly from nature. So it's called live sketch or live painting. Um, and the two paint live flowers are you cannot just paint from out of your own mind to start with so you must start with somewhere so usually after you you studied ancient painting uh, a classic style you start to learn from uh, nature uh, so this is what uh, i did uh, with this uh, summer orchid it's a huge um, you can see the, the leaves has this bending point that's different than spring orchid, which usually is a just curve, round curve. It's very tall the one. Um, it usually put you can put it in the middle of the hall. Uh, uh, you know, it's a, a giant plant. Okay. Um, let me see. I tried to find that uh, reference. Let me close this window first. Sorry, but I want to introduce you a, a lady. Uh, she is uh, well known in painting iris flower and other flowers, but she, she doesn't do any um, peony or for gentlemen, but she's um, so big name, you have to know. Uh, in flower painting, because she only paints garden flowers. Um, she studied in UK, France, and Switzerland, and returned to China and married to a uh, Wu uh, Zuoren. He, he is, uh, he's uh, good at uh, both oil painting and uh, um, Chinese brush painting. Both of them are good at uh, Western painting. and. Uh, um, Chinese painting, um, but the the wife uh, Xiao Xiao Shu Fang. Uh, let me write the name. I think you can see. Can you see the title of this file? It's in the oh, maybe not. Let me write her name here. Okay, let's see. <coughs> well, I just write the the normalization. Okay. Xiao Shu Xiao is the, the last name. Fang. 
you can search this on Google and you'll find uh, her beautiful pennies I'm going to show you. So this is not iris. Okay, just say uh, this one is right. So she she painted beautiful iris. The kind of iris I think it's uh, called a uh, maybe a combination of uh, it's a water iris. There are two kinds of in in the um, in Japan. One is called the uh, kakisu bata, and the other is uh, shobu. This is probably shobu kind of. Um, it has beard. The uh, the other one is a crest, right? It's like a blue flag kind of. It's blue, yeah, more blue. Okay. And you can see she uh, she outlined the stroke, uh, or you know the white flowers. But you should have that in mind when you do uh, mogu or um, boneless or lineless uh, without contour. Um, is a very uh, highly stylized. That's what uh, I would uh, recommend uh, when we paint iris. Okay. Um, yeah, she does this on on the, on the ceramic, also very decorative. So I try to find one. It's relatively easier for you. So maybe just three flowers, like a arrangement. This one looks good. Okay, let's just do. This is pretty simple. Um, usually, the flower size is the same as a live flower. Uh, when we do, so if the paper is smaller, you just cut off the bottom part, leave the the flowers, right? So I I, I what I do is probably I just uh, do on my own. Uh, after you looking at the style, you get impression. I'll show you the steps how to do this. Okay, uh, so let's just uh, turn off the. Okay, I'm going to start with uh, um, the center from the center. Uh, let's just let's just do this one because I really don't know which one to pick. Unless you have a preference of which ones you saw, because it's all the same, um, all but the same. But uh, maybe this is not typical. Uh, let me find. Yeah, this one is too simple. I just have try to find three three for the um, shing, uh, soy, and the Thai, right? But you you won't find here because she doesn't really follow the this <laughs> this uh, terms. But we we can selectively uh, do that. Uh, try to identify those. Maybe this would be good. Okay, so I'll use ready color from the semi blocks. It's easier to. To save time, you can also blend your color with uh, different blues or you know things like that. So I'll start with a, a yellow, a white, uh, opaque yellow maybe. Uh, what is it called uh, the number eleven? The it says baby, baby, baby bird, or something like that. Just uh, for the center part. And you might want a little bit warmer, but uh, let me see if I got orange here. Yeah, there's some orange color. So you might use a little bit. I see if if you want to uh, have a little stronger color. So the first thing I do is to to determine the, the height. 
this is this is spring flower. Um, it probably uh, it's the kakitsu uh, what's it kakitsu patas kind of. So you the leaves are relatively short, younger. Okay, so I just put it like a little flower it, it, to start with, it was yellow, just like we did it with orchid, right? just like five strokes. Um, and you can do both, but uh, uh, probably to, to, uh, to be safe, you just do one, and uh, because it might dry too fast. Uh, so we just save that brush, the yellow. So I'll use one for blue. Uh, I'll use darker blue. The sample is purple, and I, I just use blue to to illustrate this. Okay, and you okay? Here's some other blue. Maybe you can mix some different blue to change a little bit. So I'll I'll do the darks first. So you you can leave a little bit yellow at the bottom. So the idea is like we painted uh, the uh, the other classical orchid. Uh, the center is voided. You, you don't put a big uh, chunk of a center there, right? So that, that's that's the same idea. So the the center is uh, uh, yellow. You, you can add some in between, you know, if needed. And there's two. Um, four, what we call big, big petals. Uh, the uh, Japanese iris doesn't have this really tall um, standard or standing petals. So we we just put a little um, larger ones behind this. But uh, try to avoid the symmetric symmetric. Uh, you know, try not not to make it two sides even. That's more important. So I just make uh, some uh, kind of. This is a uh, uh, mulberry paper, so you can doesn't have the watermark. So you you can combine strokes. You can. But you try not to uh, repeat too much because you still want to keep some uh, kind of uh, uh, calligraphy. Then I use this uh, purple color to, to dilute the not purple lavender color, lavender. Okay, maybe I'll just use this light for the same family, the light light. Color. So it's too light. Dilute it a little bit, it'll be fine. And just paint the shape of the um, pedal like that. And uh, one more. Just make it even. But again, the, the Bottom is uh, very um, suggestive, not, not um, very heavy. Okay, so, I mean the the center part is narrower. Yeah. You can have some uh, shade shades because uh, she's really into um, what oil, you know, she started as an oil and watercolor painter. Maybe you can add a little light there, and maybe suggest another fall, uh, uh, long falling petal. And then you can add a little accent on the, like a um, little curve, curve, up, pedal, kind of uh, the the other side of the pedal is darker. That create a little contrast. 
just uh, for variation. And now I combine two shapes. Okay, so uh, this flower actually it has uh, the, it's a also a parent flower, I would say, but not uh, the same size. Or it's uh, in the same blooming stage. Right? So I'm going to make it smaller. So you start from the dark in the center, the small ones. After you do the, the center with a little, prepare the center with a little uh, whitish yellow, opaque yellow. And you, you do some little petals like that. And then maybe you should use three, three brushes <laughs> to, to uh, save color. Anyway, so this, This is the one, and uh, oh, actually, this one goes up so that touches the previous petal there, partially overlap. Okay, I just borrow that dark spot to become this part, this new petal, and uh, there's one falling, I mean the fall or the uh, down under petal actually is half half open, so it's on the top. That's a um, variation of that. And you, to fill in that little space, if uh, to make it really tight, you can use some dark to just add um, some small petals, I think. Abstract principle actually is more important uh, uh, than details of a def definition of you know elements because I right now I s I'm thinking abstractly you know this this should be um, tight dense dense yeah so I de eliminate this space whatever element is available it doesn't important you know it's uh, it's not as important as uh, to fill in that space. Okay. All right. So I I got the parents now. The child is behind the one of the uh, the stock uh, the spike. So uh, we we wait. I'll use green, like green gray, you know, kind of. So um, in, in in brush painting, we always have to include ink. That's why. Uh, this painting has ink, just like we do orchid. If you use color, it would uh, kind of distract. It doesn't uh, look as elegant as uh, pure ink. So I, I use a little bit, maybe a little bit yellow, whatever yellow here, golden yellow or some kind of yellow to, uh, to paint this. Uh, stock or stand. So there's a calyx kind of thing. And then uh, this line should be not in the middle, very important. It has a diagonal, uh, always like in, in the art of uh, uh, flower arrangement, it goes like this. Right? Okay. One stroke, time to just pull, just yeah. Okay, so this one again could be a little weaker. It's getting closer to the previous one, and we'll I'll finish the uh, leaves. Then we will do the child behind the leaves. Okay, here's another element we, we can and uh, we omit that because the child will make a cross there. So we just uh, do one. And you can put a little shade there, accenting. Okay. No repeat. <laughs> I'll use the same brush. Um, this time just uh, maybe just pure 
ink with a, I don't know what color tone it is. Okay, a little blue. That's good. Indigo. Indigo and ink, if you want to make uh, the color for the leaf. And then we'll, uh, because we're going to draw the parallel veins, so we uh, keep the the uh, color in the in the light value or tone. Uh, you don't have to vary too much the tonality in one stroke. Usually, people like to do that. Like I said, if you use um, if you're going to use the lines, you don't want to uh, to use the variation too much variation. So we we'll just keep it even. And this one goes in front of the the main the uh, main spark like that. All right. And you can go back. Okay. And uh, then we have a, a secondary leaf that support this. By the way, blotting is very important to keep the uh, especially the, the point from bleeding because uh, uh, in Japanese pronunciation the sobu it, it sounds like a uh, shangwu or, or martial art so it's, it's a sword symbol of sword you want to show the sharpness of that so I want to include a sharp tip and then I blot it just to keep it sharp Maybe uh, you know you don't have to because when you blot that become lighter too, so maybe a little bit dark to start with. And with the acid, you can add the dark, you can charge it, but um, if you, whichever you do, it's fine. So the second uh, group is like a soy. Um, it's shorter and then uh, form another point in the in triangle. So this one could be. A, should be lower. This could be longer, I think. So we can just add a little. You can add if, if you know what you are doing. You know. Uh, okay. So this one, you can go outside the frame, but let me just keep it. Um, it's about three quarter in um, the art of uh, floral arrangement theory. So, of this lens, this spot there, and it has similar uh, kind of a, uh, like I tried to make a turn, but I, I think I missed it. I missed it. I just make it up. Okay. At this point, you can repeat because uh, you're going to undo the veins anyway to uh, hold them together. So this second one supporting stroke is shorter. Never do the two lines or two leaves in the same lens, just like a flower arrangement. Right. Um, now we're going to give uh, uh, another growth as a base, you know, for the. Uh, child, you can do the flower first. Then we do that. So the the child flower. I uh, I have three minutes. It's four minutes. Okay, good. So it, it's under the main flower. It's inside a little bit. You can you can move it there if you want. Uh, depends on your your own composition. So I may. Um, I'll follow the original design. Of master shells, so maybe a little bit to this side, yeah. And uh, looking back to the, oh, I I think the key is the crossing. So if you don't have the crossing, I just add this uh, this element here on the on the stock. You don't want to have too much destruction on the stem, but you can have a little covering leaf there. 
Okay. This um, dark, okay, and then light. You can do the light first if you want, and then dark. But just make a yin yang, you know, just both uh, elements to present contrast. Okay. And the, the bottom is a little soft. Okay, I'm going to um, use the remaining gray. It's darker. It gives a little more importance with dark. And it goes, uh, it should be a little different center. So. But it still come to the same pot, you know, some same container, maybe same jar, or you know, same, same um, what it calls so soy ban, right? <laughs> the water container. Okay, and then we just do a little. Try to use uh, different tonality to separate different different uh, elements here. And this should be a, it could be a little longer. Uh, the angle should be not parallel completely. This kind of challenge you want to maybe go. A little bit narrower on top, maybe, and then more suggestive. Okay, and before it gets dry, you can uh, start to do the details on the paddle. First of all, it's uh, uh, you can use white. Maybe a little yellow, whatever you know. The uh, either darker or maybe darker on the light pedal, light on the darker pedal. Some veins. We use a smaller brush. I think. It, uh, give me maybe ten minutes <laughs> if you could to finish this. It takes uh, longer than usual because I want to show the details on the on the pedals now. Okay, um, you can do some uh, veins to suggest texture details, you know, but don't overdo it. Just uh, suggestively. Okay, and then. Uh, some dark ones on the on the light yeah it could be very calligraphic we can do the center and then the center may not exactly in the center so there's shading maybe some perspective, yeah. So this light, dark on the light, light on the dark. Okay, and then this goes up there. Radiate from the bottom. And this pedal could be either, um, I, you don't have to really, uh, just let the viewer decide sometimes. Ambiguity is good in painting. Okay, now we're going to do the do the veins on the leaf with dark ink. They're not completely parallel, so you kind of uh, it's the center is straight and then 
the side kind of round it up. The brush dryer is good. A little smearing is, is, is nice, but not too much. Right? So you want to make the brush, um, load the brush in uh, very thirsty on, on wet, thirsty brush on wet, wet, with a smaller brush too. The center vein may not be in the center exactly, so it could be on, on one side, something like that. Okay, and that's it. Uh, I forgot to sign. Let me sign here. Usually, we can um, use a, a title like uh, this says uh, "Opening Wings," like a butterfly. Yeah. Flying, um, so we just copy this one. Let me just add a little bit white to the center here. It's too solid. I try to avoid that blob in the center. Um, yeah, you can. If it if it uh, if it lost the white, you can. I mean the the yellow. You can. You have to. You can use gouache or yellow to to fake it. Okay. All right. So this is a, a sales script. Sales script is a potential in Japanese. We use that uh, on sales usually, but uh, um, on painting it's also very popular to write the title. Very formal, kind of. Gives a, a lot of uh, power to the painting. This, this kind of line is called uh, uh, tip concealed stroke. It's like you, when you paint the veins or the stock like this. Tip concealed. It's, it's pictograph. You can tell this is uh, the, the feather of uh, the birds, right? The feather, kind of like a feather, right? And then this is the sound wing. Okay, opening wings are um, display wings. And the, the new years, uh, we are not in the uh, year of uh, tiger yet, so you, but you can write the, the western like a, she does here, um, 1976. We can write uh, uh, 2022. I just heard a joke. This year is uh, 2020 second. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> That's a good one, huh? Yes. Just stay safe and healthy, everybody. Again, the means of uh, the first month uh, of uh, tw uh, 2022. Today's uh, oh, the the fourth already. As I was saying, yeah. we already passed four days into the new year. Okay, and uh, 
uh, just a name is to make it easy. So uh, we have a saying that uh, sky is high, let the birds fly. Uh, so it's a long for freedom. Right? Uh, so zan chi means uh, opening wings, ready to fly. Okay, um, seal. Oops, let's see this. <laughs> So cold here in LA. It's uh, 53, maybe outside, 55, something like that. We don't use uh, um, heat inside because our plant doesn't like that. It's too dry. Yeah. So just keep warm with wearing more. Okay. Any questions and comments? Um, Henry, this yeah. is Alice. I have a question uh -huh. about the uh, outline, I mean, the, the vein. So sometimes we have the veins inside the petals or the leaves without the outline yeah. outside, but sometimes we do. So is there any rules about that? Yeah. Without the outline, it's called freestyle. Even we we, we do with uh, this kind of uh, lines, we, we still call it spontaneous style without the outline. The outline is only used in fine line painting, which is uh, uh, known as gongbi. I think Japanese has a different uh, technique term, nihonga, in nihonga, you know. It, they, they have this elaborated style also, right? Um, so, Without the outline, it's called the boneless style or spontaneous style. Um, you can outline the white flowers. That's an exception. Uh, you can also outline the leaves, but the way you outline is different. It's more calligraphic or more uh, loosening than uh, fine line style. So if your outline is uh, kind of uh, calligraphic uh, with a, with a more variations in uh, the thickness, uh, it's still considered uh, freestyle. Uh, as, you know, as long as you can harmonize it, uh, there's something we call the jian gong dai xie, which is combination of uh, gong bi and uh, xie yi, or spontaneous style. So uh, you can have a very elaborated just element, like a flower or even a bug in gong bi style, and then you do the leaves uh, in very bold strokes. It's a contrast kind of style. So um, there's no rule against uh, outline in freestyle. But usually in, in outline style, you start with an uh, outline or template with outline. Great. The, the follow-up on the uh, outline. So if you do the Gongbi style outline with the fine lines, um, do you do the color first and then add the lines or do the outline first? Oh, yeah, good, very good question. Um, in Gombi painting tradition, they start with a white uh, painting. We call it Bai Miao, white sketch or white outlined uh, template or, or uh, painting without color. And then you start shading it with uh, um, one color or ink, light ink. And then you, you apply color uh, in many, many layers. If you check Gongbi painting, you'll see the procedure online. Uh, maybe some video demos. I have a lesson on that uh, with a professor from Nanjing University. Uh, her name is Rao Wei. She's really good at that. So um, to answer your question, you, you, you normally, classically, you do the uh, online first. However, these days, they, they uh, borrowed some Western technique so that you could do the wash first from light to dark. And especially a, a kind of a style called the Shino, Shinomari, right? A, a Chinese uh, and Western 
uh, hybrid kind of uh, wall, wallpaper art, kind of decorative art. Uh, yeah. in, in, in UK and then some in maybe uh, in Europe, they do that kind of uh, painting in Gumbi style, but uh, uh, the process is reversed. So they start from the light to dark and then uh, outline. Yeah. So uh, it really depends the art artist. I, I, I have seen professors um, in university and today in, in, in uh, China, they do the background wash first to create that kind of uh, uh, ancient um, uh, atmosphere, and then do the 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 make the if you know the the background. Usually we don't do the background, but uh, you can do the background. As, as you can see, uh, I have some variations. I experimented. This one was uh, uh, I did the background wash after the painting. But you can do the wash first uh, if you if you if you want, you know. And uh, yes. And it's okay to to combine different. Yeah, 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 yes. I'm going to teach a fusion watercolor class uh, coming this month uh, on the starting on the 18th through the Brooklyn Public Library. It's free to join. Uh, uh, yeah, if you're interested, I can send you the link maybe in the chat uh, next week. So I, I will use watercolors on watercolor paper. Uh, probably I'll mount uh, well, rice paper onto rice uh, onto regular Western paper uh, to make watercolor paintings. Uh, it's primary in uh, landscape, but with flowers in the foreground. Uh, to celebrate, celebrate to the Year of Tiger, I uh, I did a t actually it's based on the project I did uh, for a um, uh, Kathy Bank. Uh, they uh, they commissioned me to do a series of uh, tiger themed painting for the New Year, um, but the tiger is uh, hidden, only see a little bit hint of the tiger, but mostly you know just tiger lily, tiger orchid. Uh, tiger um, sunflower or something with, has to do with tiger, but you know, it's, um, it's a very uh, interesting uh, project I did. So I, I decided to offer um, a class to introduce, you know, the way I, I how I combined two different traditions to create uh, uh, the fusion. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, you got the link. Perfect. Someone posted a fusion workshop. Great. Uh, yeah, you you, you can uh, sign up uh, for free. Uh, it's on Tuesdays. Actually, today. Yeah, we were lucky that uh, we don't have class today. Otherwise, it would be fifteen weeks in a row. I don't have. Uh, time slot for this, uh, you know, first this Tuesday meeting for you. So, um, so starting on the 18th through May 3rd, I think, on Tuesdays, this time, um, you can join the, that class. I'll show you how to, how to paint watercolor with uh, Chinese or Japanese techniques and concept. Okay, <laughs> I don't have time to talk about uh, other gentlemen, but uh, hopefully uh, you can catch up my other videos online and the classes. Okay, I, uh, I, I just try to um, make the, you know, life painting possible. Like if you, if you in the future uh, doing this uh, kind of flower arrangement, you have a painting in your mind to start with. Uh, but you don't want to cut the, the very expensive flowers like this. This is this is too expensive to, to cut them, right? Uh, but uh, for um, water iris, uh, you, you probably you have it in the wild, right? Along Washington Lake. Yeah. So so iris. That's why I think iris is sister. Uh, 
of a, a, a orchid family maybe so that's why I, I changed a little bit twisted a little bit for the uh, for your to suit your your agenda for this new year so hope you enjoy both arts and then I'll see how you will how, how you're doing later to share it yeah. thank you that was just wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Darcy. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hey, thank you. And to all, happy almost Year of the Tiger. And uh, we'll see you on February 1st. Thanks, Sally. <laughs> Bye-bye now. Thank you, Henry. Thank you. Henry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.